Elena was a lively six-year-old with a heart full of wonder and a boundless imagination. She adored drawing and would spend hours sitting by her window, surrounded by crayons and markers, sketching beautiful dresses that she dreamed of bringing to life one day. Her little sister Grace was her biggest fan, constantly watching her with wide eyes as Elena would explain her latest designs with a flourish, filling their small room with her infectious laughter. Their lives were filled with shared secrets, whispered dreams, and countless games. Whether it was pretending to be famous fashion designers or creating entire worlds for their stuffed animals, the two sisters were inseparable. Little did they know this simple, joy-filled world would soon be changed forever. As Grace giggled beside her, Elena looked at her sister with a serious expression, her brow furrowing as she sketched a new dress on paper. One day, Gracie, I'll make you the prettiest dress in the world. Just wait, she promised, handing Grace a small drawing with pink hearts. It was a moment that would later become one of Brooke and Keith's most cherished memories, capturing Elena's radiant joy and kindness. One evening, as they all sat around the dinner table, Keith and Brooke noticed something unsettling. Elena, who was usually the chatterbox of the family, was unusually quiet, and when she did speak, her words seemed slightly slurred. Her hand trembled as she reached for her glass, and she almost spilled her juice, an occurrence so unlike her. Brooke's heart skipped a beat. She exchanged a worried glance with Keith, but they both brushed it off, thinking it was a one-time thing. The following days, however, brought more concerns. Elena began stumbling, her steps less steady, and her movements slowed. At times, she seemed confused, almost as if she was struggling to focus. Each new symptom was a knife in Brooke's heart, and Keith, though trying to be strong, was increasingly unnerved. He would catch himself watching her, analyzing every small movement, each stumble filling him with dread. Maybe she's just tired, he'd murmur to Brooke but she could see the fear in his eyes. Growing increasingly anxious, Brooke and Keith decided to take Elena to the local hospital. They described the symptoms to the doctor, who examined her briefly. After a few basic tests, he smiled reassuringly and told them it was likely a case of strep throat. Just give her plenty of fluids and rest. She'll be back to herself in no time, the doctor said confidently. Relieved but still cautious, they returned home, hoping the doctor was right. Over the next week, however, things only got worse. Elena's energy waned, her movements became more unsteady, and the light in her eyes seemed to dim. Each day felt like a countdown, filled with silent prayers that tomorrow she'd be better. But as they watched their daughter struggle with what should have been the simplest of tasks, they realized that something was seriously wrong. We need to do more, Brooke whispered to Keith one night, her voice shaking as they lay in bed sleepless and consumed by worry. Keith nodded, holding her hand tightly, silently vowing to get to the bottom of Elena's mysterious illness, no matter what. After pressing for further tests, the family finally saw a pediatric specialist who recommended an MRI. On the day of the scan, the atmosphere in the hospital was tense. Keith held Brooke's hand tightly as they waited, his palms sweaty, his heart racing. Time seemed to drag as they sat together, their minds spinning with fear and dread. When the doctor finally approached them, his face solemn, Brooke felt her stomach drop. I'm afraid we have difficult news, he began, and the words that followed shattered their world. Elena, their vibrant little girl, had been diagnosed with diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma, DIPG, an aggressive and incurable brain tumor. The doctor explained that it was rare and that most children diagnosed with DIPG have only a few months to live. Brooke gasped, unable to comprehend the words. Keith stood frozen, gripping Brooke's hand as if it were the only thing anchoring him to reality. No, it can't be, Brooke whispered, her voice trembling. The doctor's expression was filled with compassion, but there was no hope in his eyes. In the days that followed, Brooke and Keith grappled with an impossible decision. They had to decide whether to tell Elena about her illness, whether to share with her the truth of her limited time. One evening, as they sat together in the quiet of their living room, Brooke sobbed softly into her hands, overcome by the weight of it all. Keith wrapped his arms around her, his own tears streaming down his face. How do we tell her that she's... that she's not going to make it? Brooke choked out. Keith didn't have an answer, 
but he knew they needed to protect her innocence for as long as possible. They decided that they wouldn't tell Elena the full truth. They'd let her continue to be a little girl for as long as she could, filling her remaining days with joy, laughter, and love. Together, they agreed to keep the diagnosis from Grace as well, telling her only that her big sister was a little sick and that they'd do everything they could to make her better. Keith and Brooke vowed to make each day count, to give their little girl as much love and happiness as they could. Despite their heartbreak, Brooke and Keith found a strength they didn't know they possessed. They took Elena on small adventures, picnics at the park, beach trips, and movie nights at home with popcorn and cozy blankets. They filled her days with laughter, even as they struggled with their own grief. They poured every ounce of their love into her, creating memories that they knew would have to last a lifetime. One evening, as they watched a sunset together, Elena looked up at Brooke with a curious smile. Mommy, am I going to get better? She asked innocently. Brooke's heart ached and she forced a smile, fighting back tears. Yes, sweetie, we're doing everything we can, she said, her voice steady, though her heart felt like it was breaking. Unknown to her parents, Elena had been leaving small, handwritten notes around the house, hidden in her toy box, inside her favorite books, and even taped under the kitchen table. Each note was filled with love, kindness, and words of encouragement, as if she wanted to leave behind little pieces of herself for her family to find after she was gone. In one note, she wrote, Dear Mommy and Daddy, I love you so much. Please be happy and remember me forever. I'll always be in your heart. She signed each note with a small drawing of a heart, her way of leaving love in every corner of their home. As the weeks passed, Lena's health declined. She grew weaker, but her spirit remained strong. She would often sit with Grace, telling her magical stories and hugging her close. On one particularly quiet evening, she looked up at her little sister and whispered, Remember, Gracie, no matter what happens, I'll always be with you. Her words, so simple and yet filled with a depth of understanding, left Grace in tears, even though she didn't fully understand. The night Elena passed away, Keith and Brooke held her close, whispering words of love and gratitude. They reminded her of all the beautiful moments they'd shared and how deeply they loved her. She took her last breath in the warmth of their embrace, surrounded by love, her family's whispered promises guiding her peacefully into the next world. A few days after her passing, Brooke was sorting through Elena's school bag when she felt something small and crinkled at the bottom. She reached in and found a folded piece of paper. Brooke's hands shook as she carefully unfolded it, her breath catching as she read the message. To mom and dad, I love you so much. I'm sorry I had to go, but I'll always be with you. Look for me in the stars at night. I'll be the brightest one. Love your angel, Elena. Her tears fell onto the paper as she clutched it to her chest, feeling Elena's love all over again. <laughs>